time, a young man dared to dream, CBS founder William S. Paley. He and his team created the groundwork that shaped the network. And 75 years later, his dedication and leadership remain an inspiration. In an age known for tremendous change and transformation, how rare it is to see a vision like his grow and endure over seven and a half decades. And so tonight, as CBS moves forward, we thought it would be fitting to take a moment to remember the times and the talent that helped define who we are and what we do best. It all began in the Roaring Twenties when a 27-year-old visionary named William Paley began to advertise his family's cigar firm on radio stations in Philadelphia. When cigar sales soared, Paley became fascinated with the new medium. He eventually acquired the network, 16 radio stations that became known as the Columbia Broadcasting System. America instantly fell in love with radio, and by the 1930s, families gathered around their sound box to listen to their favorite programs. Weekly shows became appointment listening. Good night, sweetheart. The Bing Crosby Show, The Goldbergs, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, and The Shadow. The Shadow. Anthology shows presented the best of Broadway with film stars such as Marlena Dietrich, Humphrey Bogart, and Lauren Bacall, Joan Crawford, Lawrence Olivier, and Elizabeth Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. Wait a minute, something's happening. Lord, they're turning into flames. Ah! In 1938, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds created such a controversy that Welles was forced to call a press conference to apologize to the nation. We are deeply shocked and deeply regretful. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. To keep an ever-growing audience entertained, Bill Paley began to build his stable of stars. Some of the great talent that became part of the CBS family included Red Skelton, Burns and Allen, Amos and Andy, and Jack Benny. Why did you want to leave me? Because I can't trust myself with you. <laughs> with the invention of television, CBS was ready to bring these and other audience favorites into America's living rooms. As television became more popular, CBS continued to break new ground. Good evening, everybody. Here's the news picture tonight. In May of 1948, the CBS News with Douglas Edwards became the nation's first regularly scheduled evening newscast. Good evening. This is See It Now. In 1951, CBS launched the first documentary series, See It Now, hosted by legendary journalist Edward R. Murrow. A year later, CBS opened the West Coast headquarters in Hollywood known as Television City. Exploring the medium, Chairman Bill Paley, along with CBS President Frank Stanton, ordered the development of color television. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show in color. As this new technology became perfected, more and more shows were broadcast in color as a new era in entertainment began. Frank Shortnecker. Frank Shortnecker. With two Ks? No, he's coming along. <laughs> Most people I knew uh, had no faith in him. Some of my closest friends thought I was buying into a gimmick. And I sat back with such enthusiasm for it, I just couldn't understand any, anybody having any doubt about the future of his medium. With its eye on the world and a desire to create excellence in programming, Bill Paley proudly called CBS the Tiffany Network, a standard of quality that he first established and one that's been an inspiration for the CBS family for the past 75 years.